49 days to the December polls. Hello, I'm Arbor Kumsen and welcome to Election Brief. In today's edition, Defense Minister Dominic Nitu will assure us government will do everything possible to ensure Ghana maintain peace before, during and after the December polls. In every effort to ensure that we remain a one nation and we, we remain peaceful, as, as I said, I can assure you that government will continue to give all the resources to the men in uniform to ensure that Ghana is peaceful. The Progressive People's Party now has a running mate, Kofi Asamoah He believes in discipline and lack of planning as the bane of Ghana's development. Corruption is number one. Two. The state has failed to plan ahead. We'll have him right here in the studio. And traders at the Malamata market are our guest on Voters Voice today. We are live on your DSTV channel 421, GoTV channel 144, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow Joy News on TV. We stream on myjoyonline.com. On YouTube, we are Joy News TV. Stay tuned in. Thanks for staying with us. Now, it's 49 days to election 2020, and Defence Minister Dominic Nitwell is assuring that government will do everything possible to ensure Ghana maintains peace during and after the polls. He also assures the military is in control of the recent past secessionist activities in the Volta region and ready to ensure a peaceful 2020 election. Speaking at the launch of the United Nations at 75 event at the Accra International Conference Centre earlier today, he said government has been engaging authorities in the Volta region to win their hearts as the MPP government is committed to protecting the peace of the country. The government has put in every effort to ensure that we remain a one nation and we, we remain peaceful. As, as I said, I can assure you that government will continue to give all the resources to the men in uniform to ensure that Ghana is peaceful. We have been engaging everybody, the chiefs, the opinion leaders, the people in the area, to win, win the hearts and minds of all the people in the area. And I can assure you that as the Minister for Defense, the National Security Minister is there, the Interior is there, and our service chiefs and opinion leaders and the people who work with us, uh, we can assure you that we will ensure that we usher Ghana through this transition that we face, this problem that we face, and we'll come out very victorious at the end. And I want to thank the people of the Volta region for the support, the enormous support. We met the chiefs and they pledged to support us. If you hear of all the massive arrests and uh, fishing out of all the corporate, it is the support of the people themselves. They are working actively with the, um, the peacekeepers so, and then the, the, our security agencies. So I want to encourage them to continue to do that. They should continue to work with our security agencies, give them information, let them know exactly the criminals that we are dealing with so that we can fish them out of our society, unite this country and move forward. And I can assure you the election will be peaceful. The security agencies are on top of our fire. Uh, I've always said that an MPP government would not do anything not anything to mar the peace that we enjoy in this nation. The president has promised, and I stand on behalf of the president again to say that this government will not do anything to mar the peace that we have. We would rather allow the will of the people to take place than do anything just because of power. I can assure you that. Now let's stay on security because uh, with less than two months to the upcoming December presidential and parliamentary elections, there's been a surge in the deaths of politically exposed persons. A number of these deaths occurred through road accidents and highway robberies. So what exactly is happening? There's more in this news desk report. Chronicling in a number of this year, an NDC constituency financier for Isunafu North in the Ahafu region, Akwesi Banahene, was reportedly shot dead by some unidentified persons. The incident was said to have occurred in his house at Mim. A few weeks after that, 
The party's deputy Bono East Regional Youth Organizer in Siankujo also died after a vehicle he was traveling in was involved in a head-on collision on the Kintampo Techimang Highway. Before you get to the tow boat here is safe. Yes. There are speed ramps. A speed ramp, but I wonder most of the times these cars the the, the the trucks they are too loaded. They are heavy loaded. Even just now, a truck just passed, a charcoal truck. It was too, too, too loaded. Uh, and because, you know, they, these heavy trucks, they are braking system. When they are loaded, they are braking system. When the driver is applying brake, it's not like these uh, uh, small, small, small uh, uh, trucks. According to report, he and some other party members were returning from the funeral of the mother of a colleague party executive. In Siakujo was buried this weekend. On October 7, the 2020 NDC parliamentary candidate for the new Jabing North constituency, Samsung Utibwating, also died after a short illness. Party sources indicate he was ready to file his nomination the day after his death. But perhaps what shocked the nation more was the killing of the MP for Mfansimang Eko Kwanza Hayford on the dawn of October 9. The legislator was shot dead by suspected armed robbers on his return from a political campaign. Five persons have so far been arrested in connection with the death. We thought it was an accident, so we slowed down. We got closer and realized the rider in front of us had been stopped. We got near and realized they had guns hanging on their shoulders. Honorable was at the front of the car and he started shouting, armed robbers, armed robbers. We didn't know what to do, so we tried to use a small space and escape, but he started shooting, causing us to stop. His wife, a former police officer, is set to replace him in the upcoming election. Two days after that incident, the MPP campaign manager in the northern region died in a ghastly motorbike accident on his return from a political assignment. Mr. Hudu, until his death, was the assembly member for the Chishogu electoral area in the Tolong district. Only last Friday, the MPP's parliamentary nominee for Yape Kusegu constituency in the Savannah region, Abu Kamara, also died in a road accident with two other members of his entourage. Their vehicle reportedly crashed into an articulated truck at Datoile at night. The party's woes continued to deepen as it emerged its youth organizer for the Ududidiudio constituency, William Walters Bruce Tago, also died this weekend. The cause of death is not yet known. Many of these deaths may be accidents, but it is certainly a worrying situation. Meanwhile, on the back of some of these killings, Information Minister Kujo Pankrumah says government will clamp down on people who intend to ferment trouble ahead of the elections to create an impression of insecurity. First is the demand for insecurity. Second is the supply of security. And third is the obligation on citizens. Let me start with the demand for insecurity. I think we should be plain and honest about it that as we head for the elections, there are some persons who desire to stoke up incidents of insecurity and use same for political campaigning purposes. And we are beginning to observe instances in which uh, some persons want to hire tax vigilantes, commit attacks, um, and then hope to spin it into politics. I think on Thursday or Friday, I uh, gave indication on your network that we have received clear reports of, um, you know, plots to even attack some uh, um, independent candidates um, of the MPP stock and blame it on the MPP. Just in the last 24 hours, some persons have been arrested, I think in Aguna, um, conspiring to attack um, the NPP parliamentary candidate there. So there are some persons who are interested in uh, engineering insecurity. And let me be very clear that the security agencies will clamp down very firmly on them. Mm -hmm. There's a new anti-vigilante legislation that has been passed, and it will be used to the letter uh, on any persons or group of persons who are caught uh, in this web. That's number one for those who are interested in stoking insecurity. On the supply side, we have done a lot to beef up the numbers of um, security persons in the country, okay. talking of the police and the military, 
And we've done a lot to provide them with logistics as well. And mm -hmm. we we'll continue to do the same uh, to protect the population and at-risk um, cohorts within the Ghanaian population. Okay. On well, the third part of it, which has to do with the obligation of citizens, we all have to have our eyes wide open okay. and do well to alert the security and intelligence agencies when we hear something. We thank those who alerted the agencies in the Agona incident, but that is citizen responsibility to okay. uh, be alert and to share information with the security agencies so that they can act and protect us all. Now, the flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Bridget Jobinuku, on Saturday announced Kofi Asamoasiao as a running mate for the upcoming presidential polls. This was done during the launch of the PPP's 2020 manifesto. The flag bearer described her running mate as a party man who is in touch with the grassroots and a good match for the December elections. The PPP has singled out indiscipline and lack of planning as the bane of Ghana's development. The party says until the two issues are fixed, the country will continue to lag behind. The running mate, Kofi Asamoasiao, said this after accepting the offer. That the state is becoming incapable of managing its people in two ways. One, the state has lost control to deal with high levels of indiscipline in aspect of our lives. Corruption is number one. Two, the state has failed to plan ahead to provide the basic social economic infrastructure to support the nation's growth and development. The citizens have gone far ahead and the state is trying to catch up, yet they can't. Why should citizens go far and the state rather than as lead is behind? We need to check that. Open your eyes and you see all around us, they have failed. The specter of slum dwellings in the middle of the capital and other major cities in the with its concurrent high levels of homelessness, the exposure of significant numbers of our people to inhuman and insanitary conditions is a testimony of a dysfunctional system. If you see any market human selling on the floor, it's a problem. It doesn't have to be that way. That is not a standard of progress and development. What is even more unpardonable is the lack of an agenda to change this situation to redeem our fellow citizens from such uninhabitable, uninhabitable conditions or reduce the growth in slum dwellings and the number of homeless citizens. You would think that homelessness is a spectre which has to change, but I realize that it's not reducing, it's rather increasing. So that is uh, Kofi Asamoah He's a running mate uh, to the PPP uh, flag bearer, Bridget Jobinuku. He joins us in the studio now. Congratulations are in order, Kofi. And uh, I mean, you have risen through the ranks. You've been national secretary of the party since its formation. Uh, you've been policy director for the party. And now you are running mate. How do you feel? Uh, well, um, uh, I'm a bit, thank you very much for congratulating me. Um, I'm excited about the challenge. I am up to it. I'm ready for it. Uh, I know it's a different pedestal, it's a different role, it comes with different challenges and responsibilities and so on. But I think what is important is that you are prepared for it and also you have uh, senior party people and the entire political party behind you. Mm -hmm. And I might say that uh, it's a grassroots of the party that was rooting, mm -hmm. uh, that the party flag bearer and the entire party considered somebody like me to uh, lead them and, and, and serve. Uh, because that is what I've done since uh, the party was formed in, in, mm. in 2012. Right. Very active, prepared to serve. Mm. I actually love public service mm. and, and, and I don't have any difficulty or challenges at all. So I it didn't come as a surprise to you because you said that some party members were actually rooting for you to be selected. Yes, they were asking me if I was interested uh, uh, and, and things like that. Mm. And myself, I've been looking up to something like that. And like I said, I've always wanted to be in the public space. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was going to do direct politics at this stage, mm -hmm. but I knew at some point I'll do it. Uh, so it's, it's the expectations I had and the kinds of steps I had taken in the past mm -hmm. to do the things I wanted to do. Uh, maybe it coincided at the top at some point and some people recognized that I could do something uh, like uh, make giving me the honor mm. to support our presidential candidate mm. uh, to go for election 
2020. And I think the most important thing is that I'm prepared for the challenge. Mm. I know where we are. Right. I know what we need to do to get the situation transformed and changed. Mm. And, and therefore, uh, I think it's, 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 I'm ready uh, for the challenge. And I know what vice presidents are supposed to do. <laughs> uh, and and it's, it's going to be very easy for me. We'll to come do. to what vice presidents are supposed to do. But um, I get the sense that you feel like you ended because you've contributed a lot to the party since its formation. But how do you respond to those who say that the PPP didn't have any option, didn't have much of a choice than to look within and select one of their own? Well, first of all, I, I don't feel a sense of entitlement at all. I'm just saying that I, I've been working right. and, and people recognized it. And if they knock at your door to say, do you want to, are you interested? We want mm. to put you there if you want. Mm. Yes. Uh, no, the second part of your question, it's, it's not that we didn't have a choice. Mm. Uh, there are many other people, if you realize. Did they cast the net wide? Yes. I mean, uh, there are a lot of people. So what we do is that the number of consultations, uh, different people have to nominate who they think uh, can serve the running uh, the flag bearer when she was out there. Right. And I can say we got like five nominees mm. uh, from different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of constitutions went on. Mm -hmm. uh, after people nominated us, mm. we were spoken to if we were interested, if the party considered you. Mm. Because people can nominate you and you, can, you will not be interested. So we're five, we came down to two, uh, and when it mattered most, uh, I... You I, merged tops. I merged tops. So. <laughs> okay, so yeah. you joined the Extraordinary League of uh, uh, Running Mates. Yeah. But tell us, uh, what, what do you bring to the table? Well, like, like I said before, I, I've been observing. Um, I understand governance uh, pretty much well. Okay. Uh, I know what is going on. We know the kinds of interventions that need to be made. Uh, for us to transform and rescue Ghana from the direction that we are going. Mm -hmm. um, I've said that I like public service. I want to see customer service introduced into public service. Mm -hmm. I see the state lagging behind in this provision of fundamental responsibilities. And therefore, and, and I don't see uh, an attempt by the state to work very fast and catch up. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to uh, fundamentally the constitution, there are a lot of... Uh, uh, what we called defects mm. or uh, things we need to fix. And we haven't seen a certain commitment and fidelity to the constitution by those who have the power to rule now or to govern. I, I want such to as what? Such, such as what? Can you cite a few examples? So, for example, um, I, I like the president's passion, mm. the, the, the energy with which he speaks and all of that. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't talk like that when it comes to compulsory education to be able to put people in school as is the expectation of the constitution. In mm. fact, it's an injunction on any president mm. to put every single child of Ghana into school. Conveniently, President Mahama, President Kufo, President Rawlings, now President Akufuado, they have pretended or feigned ignorance that that provision is not there. We went to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said there is no ambiguity about that provision. Mm. Yeah, so you can chant and shout and do, get all the accolades for free SHS, Mm. Free SHS is actually an addition. So if you leave 2 million or 2.5 million children outside school mm. and you make a law to say that without BEC certificate you can't drive, basically by state own action, you are making people unemployed. So you're saying they should implement the constitution to the letter it is by the starting from to the, constitution. And that is the what primary says. school level. There is no financial commitment to it. The law says go and vote for your uh, president every four years. Mm. In the constitution, you didn't see money there. Mm. But we do it, don't we? So when the constitution says take every child to school, mm. compulsory education and available to all, and we don't have the capacity, we don't have the resources, we don't have the space to do it, mm. the state has failed. Mm. It's the most important natural resource, and that has to change. Mm. The second one, briefly, is... Let's, we'll get to the second one, but let's stay on free SHS uh, because you raised that issue. Um, and the non-implementation of the constitution... Yes. with regards to uh, free schooling, especially free, from compulsory. the basic level, compulsory schooling for the, from the basic level. Is it realistic, especially given that, you know, um, we're spending so much just on senior high school education. Yeah. Is it realistic to extend it from basic level? Some are even saying crash, from crash right up through to uh, SHS level. Yeah, we are the one asking for compulsory from kindergarten to senior high school. Uh, like I said before, senior high school is an addition, is not the fundamental. Mm. 
So we have said that if you look at even the uh, BEC, it was not adequate what the constitution said we should do in our view. Mm -hmm. So we were going to extend the compulsory education, universal education from kindergarten, primary, junior high to senior high school. Okay, so, so we kindergarten, will abolish primary, junior, junior high, high senior to high. senior high that school. That is our policy. Have you costed it? Oh yeah, we did that and it's going to cost us 5 billion cities uh, in the next 5 years or so. And even if you take Every year per annum or within that period? No, 5 that billion cities every year or 5 billion cities over five years. No, so when we start incrementally by the fifth year, it's going to cost us five billion cities every year. Okay. Now, if you take free SHS, it's only cost us only two billion uh, cities so far. Mm. So what is two billion compared to 140 billion that has been borrowed over the last four years? Mm. So we have the resources to do it. It's just that we have not committed to it. Mm. And I'm sure a lot of people were doubting the president, the current president, and Akufuad when he said he was going to do free SHS. Mm -hmm. But it's probably not to be cost costly at all. So we can even make it less expensive when we introduce other uh, reforms or mechanisms, for example, reduce the number of people who are in boarding school. Right. When we are saying we should build complete school compounds, and then when you build complete school compounds, this, this, the, the child starts from KG, and they know right from class one that they don't have to finish at JSS. Mm. They need to look up to finish at senior high school. Oh. So if you do these nine schools, the computers are there, the facilities are there, the sports facilities, the kitchen, toilet, everything is in there. Mm -hmm. And they do community schooling, go to school and come back home. We will be able to educate. In fact, the constitution said we should have a plan to make it possible. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is to call the Ghana Education Service people and the Ministry of Education into a room and give that presidential directive and they'll get the solutions for you. Is that right? Is that is as simple as that? But that's the same thing the president told the current GES and ministry to be able to fix free SHS and increase enrollment. Okay. And sometimes they are proud of those achievements and they want us to hear that. Mm. What we are in for is that that aspect, which is important, constitutional, fundamental, has been left unattended. Okay. And we need to pay attention to it. All right. We're some 49 days from the elections. And uh, I, from what we hear, the PPP just recently launched their manifesto. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this is enough? First of all, come to whether people can even assimilate it and appreciate it to be influenced enough to vote for the PPP. But tell us what the manifesto contains. Well, it's a simple write-up, uh, simple in English. So I was what are of, some of the promises that you so are So the, the, the fundamental the thing we want to take to this election is jobs, 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 and, okay. and the power uh, to the people to get opportunity to elect their own district chief executives. Okay. So we are promising ourselves and the people of Ghana that we are the new hope that Ghana needs to look up to. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were expecting the, the president to be the last hope in the fight against corruption and so on, and he has failed in that direction. Mm -hmm. What we are saying in that manifesto is that we are committed to fighting corruption practically. Mm -hmm. And I'll quickly give you two things and I'll move on to some other pro uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. One is that we are for public declaration of assets regime. Okay. We think that if you want to be in the public space, you should be able to do that small sacrifice by mm -hmm. telling us what you owe. Mm -hmm. It's open. We have just passed the Right to Information Act, mm -hmm. and we have seen that Parliament has mistakenly put fees there mm -hmm. to charge citizens before they give us information. It is wrong. It is not public service. Mm -hmm. It is not customer service. No shareholder pays any management team to get information from, from his company. So, so once we are the shareholders of Ghana, mm. or when PPP is elected and we are managers, right. we will tell the shareholders don't pay fees. Any information you want in accordance with the right information. So essentially, you will amend the law. Yes, we so amend the law. We can even pay, in order we can to even pay on behalf of the citizens as and when they apply. Mm. So the amendment is one option, and waiving the fee is another option. Okay. We come back to uh, uh, election of MMDCs. Right. In fact. The president has done something that is a, is, a, is a negative against his democratic credentials. Let me tell you today that we can vote our MMDCs without going for a referendum, for the avoidance of doubt. How? Because the, the, the rules that require us to vote our DCs are not entrenched, entrenched provisions. Article 243 going down mm. are not entrenched provisions. Mm -hmm. It is the 55-3 mm -hmm. which bars political parties from participating. So what the president and MPP people did was that, yes, we want to allow you to vote your, for your MMDCs, but we want political parties to participate. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a decision that is entirely left to the people of Ghana, mm -hmm. whether we will want parties to engage in it or not. Now, if you felt 
that somehow Ghanaians wanted to protect that space and you were not going to win the election, you don't deny us the opportunity to decide on it. It is possible Ghanaians could have voted and said, allow parties. It's possible for Ghanaians to say, we don't want parties. Stay where you are in parliament and presidency. Right. Don't come to the district assemblies. Mm -hmm. But that decision was for us to make and not the president to do. And you're so that, that is a constitutional coup d'etat. That could not, was not necessarily through a referendum. Is that what you're saying? No, that's the separate, separate conversation issues. altogether. Okay. To elect MMDCs, you just have to amend Article 2433. And you said government is not committed to doing that. Yeah, because that is why they threw in the, the card of partisan participation. Because they know from the research that has been done mm -hmm. that there's a 50-50 split among Ghanaians mm -hmm. that some people want partisan, some people don't want. So if right. you are really committed, like we are, mm -hmm. to electing MMDCs, and not just that one, all districts of the district assemblies, okay. that wanted appointment must also go. Right. So you've oh. talked about election of MMDCEs. You've talked about amending the uh, Right to Information Act. You talked about job creation. But let's stay on job creation sure. because give us the specifics. How do you intend to create jobs for the youth? Because we, we just that's have two a solutions. major topic going into the elections. Just two things. Mm -hmm. We have what we call interregional highways. Mm -hmm. It's been on the drawing map since Kwame Nkrumah's time or President Nkrumah's time. So we have 18 roads we call national roads. Mm. So a lot of people know N1 yes. to be from Tetakwashi to Malam Junction. Mm -hmm. No, N1 means this, the motorway, mm. the motorway we know from Tema, yes. the same specification. N1 means that one, but not from Tema to Accra, but supposed to be from Aflao to Alubo. And there are supposed to be 18 of that to be able to develop Ghana. That is the plan that is there since independence. Right. And nobody has touched it. And we have left it to be there. And that is why you see a lot of concentration in the cities and all this unemployment going on. If you open up the country, the private sector people will have the opportunity to go and set up companies on their own. And that is where the job will come from. So I the don't state, understand you. Are you saying that you're going to create jobs through road construction? Road construction is number one. Just mm -hmm. imagine us doing motorway type of roads, 18 of them. The second one is Tema to Boko. That is the N2. Mm -hmm. Recently they call it Eastern Corridor Road. Mm. There's a Western Corridor, which is the N12, which is not done. That is Lobo all the way through Gorso and all those places. And all these work. haven't been done. But no, there might be a reasonable explanation. Yeah, for but it. put the money there. And funding let us is a major issue. There's no problem with funding. Look, I'll give you one example. We are discussing the Japan right now. Mm. And the reason why we have gone through the Japan route mm. is that we don't see directly what we have used mineral mining oh. resources for. In our proposal, we are saying that we should create what is called heritage project. So these end roads are heritage projects, the same way we have affinity towards the motorway. Mm. So if you give that road construction, uh, if you give that road on construction, right, mm. you give it out as on contract, right. and you promise the contractor that the mineral proceeds, $200 million every year, mm. will come to your firm to complete that road. In five years, that road will be done. And then you have something significant to show that the min and that means that we will be winners in this election uh, because a lot more people are looking for an opportunity to say we are not happy in the system and they're looking for an opportunity that a party will emerge that will be able to do the interventions that are necessary to transform this country. But I've heard and people that say that even though they are not going to vote for the NDC or MPP, a vote for a, a third party such as the PPP will be a wasted vote. Well, a wasted vote these are being communicated by NDC and MPP people. <laughs> they are communicators because it suits them. Mm. So a few people will hear that on radio and think that is what it means. A, vote, a wasted vote, actually, mm -hmm. is the one that when you give to MPP or NDC, you get nothing out of it. So we will take, uh, we'll do our best uh, to explain what a wasted vote means. We'll do our best to explain uh, that a, a, a vote for the PPP is actually mm -hmm. a vote to make a statement. And it's a vote for yourself. Mm. I mean, there are parents who, who wish that their children are able to go to school mm -hmm. and they need some kind of state intervention mm -hmm. in, in that area. And the Constitution has promised that mother or father mm. that the person they vote for is supposed to do that. Mm. So if that's my expectation and the state has not been able to do that for me after voting MPP and DC, that is a, that's a wasted vote, not the one that comes to our way. The one that comes to our way is your vote, mm -hmm. and we are just representatives to receive the vote in our direction. All right. Many thanks. Uh, Kofi Asamoasial is the newly outdoored uh, running mate of PPP flag bearer Bridget Jubanuka, and he was uh, just 
running us through their manifesto promises. Uh, we wish you all the best, Kofi. Thank you very much. Now, this is the election brief with me, Arba Kumsi. We're taking a short break. Still ahead, traders at the Malamata market are our guests on Voters Voice today. You're welcome back to Election Brief. Now for traders at the Malamata market, growing insecurity, an increase in teenage pregnancy cases and free SHS will inform their votes come December 7. Watch. Yes. 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 Bipia, why am I? Dear Bim, I take four more to do more. And so free, young Yabuno. After lights, you are free. After night, that's what you are born your bed. President Banaba, where am I? I did not know who was the bed of my gun. I did, I do so much. I do so much. I do so much. I do so much. Like Ben, Mitsia, like Ben, Mitsia, what about Mitsia? Like Ben. 
Bell, Mitsuya, what a bell, Mitsuya, the Bianu are free. free. The Bianu are free. free. Mitsuya, what a bell, Mitsuya, light bell, the Biama, Bia, Mitsuya, Mitsuya, Bia, Omani, why are they? The Gany one, Motoman, the Oma, Yan Top, maybe Bia, yes, eh, and Tanya, the other day, and your cra. Yeah, 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 Mama, oh, yes, it's so much. So uh, those were voices of the ordinary Ghanaian at the Malamata market. We'll be bringing you a lot more in the coming days. Now, questions have been raised about the probability of the wife of the slain member of parliament for the Infantsman constituency in the central region, Echo Kwanza Hayford winning the parliamentary election there in December 2020. As you know, Ophelia Kwanza Hayford was selected by the party to lead the Infantsman constituency after her husband's death. General Secretary of the MPP, John Buedu, told Joy News last week the party's decision to let the late MP's wife succeed him was born out of incessant calls by the constituents to allow his wife to replace him. Ooh, uh, I've been to the constituency several times. The whole constituency leadership and party, uh, the regional setup and the national setup, uh, deem it fit that his wife uh, is the backbone of, of, of the husband. Uh, she knows the constituency very well. And considering the last support that the husband has and the kind of difficulties that the constituency is going through a lot more of the constituents think that we should let the wife continue well not everyone took the decision kindly in fact some constituents were downright angry a group calling itself concerned infantsman youth kicked against the party's decision and demanded to know why due process was not followed in appointing a parliamentary candidate so today we ask what are the implications of this decision. I'm joined on the line by Central Regional NDC organizer Chief Mike Derry. We reached out to the MPP in the region but they have declined uh, to uh, the invitation to join this discussion. Uh, thank you very much uh, Mr. Derry. You know the constituency very well and uh, we know that Echo Hayford in 2016 won the seat by 46.82 percent over uh, your candidate uh, the NDC's Ojifu James Isun. Will this decision to have his wife replace him hurt or help your chances? Good afternoon, madam. And once again, good afternoon to your terrorist placement. Um, <clears throat> first of all, let me send uh, my deep condolences to the very family of uh, Honorable and uh, Facebook. In fact, it's not easy to lose somebody who is the breadwinner of the family, somebody who is the of people in the constituency. Going forward, um, we NDC are not really worried about the candidate of the wife who is coming in stepping for the husband. Um, because uh, we all know in Central Region that Manketin has been a, a, a heartbeat of the region. And when you win Manketin, you entirely win the region as a whole. Uh, going forward, we have about 195 branches in Infantman Constituency. And then um, during the recent registration, we registered about nine, uh, 91,475 um, electorate or members or people who are eligible to have their voter ID card to vote in the upcoming general election. Going forward, <clears throat> uh, Madam Ophelia, who is the wife of um, Echo Hayford, we all know that um, she doesn't hail from Infantman. And then the people of Infantman has always vouched for somebody who has lived with them, somebody who has stayed with them, somebody who understands their plight, somebody who really understands the, the problems in their constituency, who can be able to help them, you know, solve problems in their constituency. And then looking at uh, Madam Ophelia, she has never stayed in the constituency before. And I don't think you know the four corners of the constituency as a whole. Because getting my intelligence, uh, she, has, she just registered in the upcoming, uh, just, uh, just ended registration that we ended. That's when she registered in the constituency. So for me, as an organizer of the party in the region, I don't see her coming on board is going to be uh, a threat to the past. In fact, um, Honorable Eson, who is our candidate, has worked since 2016, and today he's still working, even in opposition. Mm -hmm. He's trying to help people in the coastal belt and also in the farming community. You know, um, in fact, my constituency has, uh, let's say, two dynamics. The coastal belt 
and the farming in our community. And then looking at the coastal belt, a son is somebody who heard from the coastal belt, and then he understands the plight of the people. He understands their worries. He understand Not to cut you, Mr. Derry, but uh, we've spoken to the leadership of the MPP, and they are very confident that Madame Ophelia can hold the seat for the party, especially because she works hand in hand with her husband during campaigns. The people on the ground know her. So if you say that, you know, um, she's not known in the constituency, what exactly are you talking about? Yeah, madam, um, you all know uh, where she's coming from. You know, she, she's coming from the uh, um, security service. And we all know security service, they don't engage in politics. You understand? She just resigned from the security service to join active politics. So if you are telling me, or if the party hierarchy is saying that um, she was running a campaign with her husband, I, I never saw her run a campaign with her husband because how can somebody who is in the police service run a campaign uh, with the husband, knowing very well that police or the security service don't engage in politics of this country? I hope you understand. So if the, if the, if the general secretary of the MPP party is saying that um, the woman was running a campaign with the husband, that means the woman herself has been flouted the rules of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the police service. And right from there, she should be, be, she should be, be sanctioned. You understand? So... Going for it, if you know where she's coming from, from the police service, then there's no need for you to believe that and then uh, she was running a campaign with her husband. Right. Now, but the so party believes that she has qualities that endear her uh, to the constituents. So what does your candidate offer that she doesn't have? Well, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that my candidate has been with the people. He's from Manchester, and he has been with the people. He's from the coastal belt. He understands the plight of the people. That's why the fact that he was not able to win the last parliamentary seat for us doesn't mean that he's not going to win this time around. You know, the people of Infantiman have realized that, look, it's not about, it's not, it's not about the party. You know, Infantiman has been the heartbeat of NDC. Uh, Honorable uh, Aquinas Savia was our MP. Right. He was on for eight years before he left office. And then uh, 2016, we lost to MPP. That's uh, for him. For. You understand? So the issue right now is that um, uh, a son, who is our candidate, even if, even though we are in opposition, trying to uh, trying very well uh, to make sure that he solves the problems of the people, and then moving forward into this election year or during the campaign, we all know that James is going to carry it at the end of the day. So some of us were very worried that um, the incident that has made it even happen. I myself, as a young man, in fact, I'm not very worried. I'm very worried because it can happen to me. It can happen to anybody. We don't vote for this in our region, or we don't vote for this in our country. So, madam, going forward, the MPP can just post themselves and say, oh, this woman can win the seat for us, this woman can win the seat. But we all know when we get to the ground, we know James, the son, is taking the seat for the NDC party coming 7th December 2020. All right. Thank you so much for your time. That's uh, Chief Derry, Mike Derry. He's a Central Regional NDC organizer. It's still here on Election Brief with me, Arabo Kumsa. Now, independent parliamentary candidate for Swami constituency, George Prempe, is refuting claims he has withdrawn from the race. Mr. Prempe also said allegations leveled against him as an NDC sympathizer are untrue. Mr. Prempe spoke to Joy News Mohammed Nuruddin in Kumasi. There's no truth. It, 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 it doesn't happen. What they are saying is just cook and tell the people. They are throwing that into the people's eyes. It is never true. It's a propaganda. I, I, I... George Prempe says all propaganda level against him are rather making him popular in the Swami constituency. A lot of things. But I've told you before already that it's not true. And what they are saying rather it's even helping me. Because whatever whatever they're saying, it has an implication. You said I'm NDC, the NDC people will vote for me. And MPP, I'm NDC will vote for me. You said I'm NDC, the people are calling me and telling me that if that is what they are telling me. I'm an NDC. They will vote for me. Even if you are not an NDC, I've already said I'm independent candidate. I'm not belongs to any party, as I'm saying. So when we go there, 
then I will see what I can do. He shall make a positive impact in the December election. Mr. Prempe says he's a trusted and reliable man to lead the people. The good people of this area have made their mind clear against him that they won't vote for him again. Because it's long overdue. We need change. Absolutely change for this area. God bless you. God bless you. God bless God. A report by Mohammed Nuruddin. Now let's send our attention on uh, Anya Soutum, where the MPP's parliamentary candidate, Dr. Dixon Amwako Kisi, says uh, John Mahama is not a better alternative to the governing party. He argues that John Mahama-led administration was insensitive to the plight of the electorate. In an interview with Joy News, the medical practitioner asks Ghanaians not to forget the hardships and mismanagement of the Mahama administration. What new thing are you going to do beyond what we are enjoying. It's like leaving a marriage. If the marriage is good and you want to leave for another person, be it another woman or be it another man, you have to ask yourself those questions. Ah, uh, is Kwame or Ajwa going to bring on board something new, a different dish, a different menu that your existing marriage is not working out? And once, once what is out there is no better, okay, is not superior, is definitely inferior because we've seen the track record there's no point in us changing gears there's no point i see where we are the lane we're on and 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 you see so you're like your mama to an inferior or the end is an inferior product i mean could be <laughs> now listen we used to pay for electricity we're not getting electricity there was a time when electricity was actually rather apt in cost because of challenges and here's a time where <laughs> prices have been reduced in times of what challenges water is made available for free in times of what challenges and this is where I say that listen there's a policy approach where NDC MPP when you put it together you realize that listen I mean <laughs> the NDC fails woefully He's also confident of winning the elections with 78% of the total votes cast. Anya yeah, um, Soto, we, we had a population of uh, 136K registered. And, and we're hoping that if, not, if, if, if we consistently work hard, we can get 78% plus. Of, of this, so this uh, target is seventy percent percent of that, yeah, vote. and 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 it all still depends on the uh, voter, uh, you Turn know, out. turnout. Yeah. Uh, but we we want seventy eight percent plus, and 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 I want them to do this as a reward to good governance by the MPP administration. Oh. Uh, Nana Adodankwa Kufado's presidency has touched many more homes than the NDC did, and what I mean by that is there are homes where people have enjoyed the ambulance ride. There are homes where people have enjoyed the free education. There are homes where uh, women have enjoyed very good COVID relief loans. Uh, it, it, that, that's so many things we can, we can talk about. And, and I sleep better knowing that the MPP is at, is, is at play. I, I sleep knowing that there are good men with good intentions working the system for us. And that's how we wrap up our show today. Remember, you can catch our show every weekday from 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. I'm Arba Kumsen. Enjoy the rest of your day.